In today's video, I'm sharing six foods that are supportive of your thyroid. So let's get into it. Hi, my name is Despina Pavlou and I'm the founder of PCOS Oracle, where I talk about all things PCOS and how to reverse it naturally. So if that's what you're looking for, then consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell to be notified when I upload a new video. So the thyroid is an organ that's often described as the hormone powerhouse. This is because the thyroid plays a role in various functions, including metabolism, heart rate, ovulation, and it acts on every single cell in the body. So we need adequate amounts of thyroid hormone. We need a fully functioning, healthy thyroid to do, to ensure the body is fully functioning and is in a healthy state. If we, if we come out of, you know, that healthy thyroid state, a healthy metabolic state, and we move into the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, kind of dysfunction, that axis where we're in that constant state of stress, our thyroid is suppressed and we're just constantly in a high alert, high stress state, high estrogen, not, um, you know, a slower metabolism, we're not ovulating, you know, we're experiencing symptoms of high estrogen, PMS. See, when we have a healthy functioning thyroid, the creation of pregnenolone and progesterone inhibits the stress system. So it takes, it stops that adrenocorticotropin um, hormone, ACTH. So if we are, have a poor thyroid, it's, you know, suppressed, it's inhibited, it's not working optimally, then we're not producing pregnenolone and progesterone and we can't stop that stress state. So it's important that we are doing all we can to support the thyroid both through diet and lifestyle. But in this video, we're going to be touching on some of those diet aspects, those, these six foods. So, you know, without further ado, let's delve into these six foods. And number one is saturated fat. Um, I know a lot of people are still a bit like, mm, saturated fat isn't that bad fat. And the answer is no. <laughs> So saturated fat like coconut oil is pro-thyroid and Dr. O.P. explains that to when and when added regularly to a balanced diet, it lowers cholesterol to normal by promoting its conversion into pregnenolone. So thyroid hormone as well as vitamin A, vitamin E, copper and light converts cholesterol into hormones in the mitochondria. So if we don't have a healthy functioning thyroid, we cannot convert cholesterol into our hormones. Cholesterol rises. Saturated fats can also dilute and displace unsaturated fats. Coconut oils, short and medium fatty acids, can sustain blood sugar and protect the mitochondria from st stress damage. The second food is protein. So here's the thing. A protein deficient or undernourished liver impacts its ability to do its many functions, which include one um, being to detoxify estrogen from the body. So when estrogen is not detoxified, it gets reabsorbed. And then as estrogen is reabsorbed into the body, it accumulates and become um, very harmful to the body. Muscle meats tend to contain high amounts of inflammatory, pro-inflammatory amino acids, including um, tryptophan and methionine. So we want to be including and balancing out muscle meats with um, anti-inflammatory amino acid um, protein sources which include gelatin, collagen and bone broth um, and I'll be linked to all of the to the products that I use um, as my gelatin source and collagen source in the description box down below. So we want to be getting anti-inflammatory amino acids which can be found in gelatin which include glycine, alanine, proline and hydroxyproline to you know balance out those amino acid profile. Um, and because tryptophan is a precursor to serotonin and serotonin is not that happy hormone we all were led to believe, um, tryptophan and serotonin actually inhibit thyroid function. So always balance out your amino acid profile. The third food is carbohydrates or sugar. In the liver, T4, which is the inactive thyroid hormone, is converted into T3, the active thyroid hormone. But in order to, for this process to take place, there must be the liver must have glucose glucose helps that conversion so again it's important that the liver is being nourished with protein and carbohydrates so don't be afraid to consume carbohydrates or sugar they're not bad you don't have to avoid it again click the card here for my should you avoid carbohydrates for p2s video for more information on why carbohydrates are so important for our health 
please go watch that video. Moving on to food number four is salt. I know salt, ah, everyone's been told, you know, salt is bad, limit your salt consumption. But actually, on the contrary, salt is very, very supportive to our health metabolism thyroid. So salt restriction increases blood pressure and water retention. Salt restriction also increases stress hormones like adrenaline. Dietary salt actually lowers the pituitary stress response. As a result, reducing cortisol and adrenaline, um, helping to balance blood sugar levels. A low thyroid actually causes you to excrete um, more salt easily. Number five is dairy products. Um, the reason I mentioned dairy is because of calcium. A deficiency of either calcium or magnesium can stimulate the parathyroid glands to produce more parathyroid hormone, PTH, which increases calcium absorption, but also removes calcium from the bones. So many of us are over consuming grains and meats, which are high in phosphorus. Now phosphorus is important for healthy bones and teeth and energy produ production, but in excess phosphorus can trigger parathyroid hormone release and cause calcium to leach from bones. So we need to make sure that we also have a healthy ratio of phosphorus to calcium. So high parathyroid hormone increases calcification of soft tissue it leads to high aldosterone, which in turn can lead to a low thyroid function. And the sixth and final food is selenium. Yeah, I know it's not a food, it's a mineral, but it's important to find foods, include foods in your diet that are high in selenium. Selenium is an antioxidant that supports thyroid function. Healthy levels of selenium are necessary for the conversion of T4 into T3, the active thyroid hormone. Foods that are high in selenium include oysters, beef, lamb, Brazil nuts and shrimp. So those are the six foods, minerals that you should be including into your diet to support your thyroid. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found some value. If you did enjoy the video, please leave it a like. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe for plenty more videos and I shall catch you in the next one.